Peace everyone, Unmask Art here and welcome to day 16 of Inktober. Uh, we are officially more than halfway through Inktober. Uh, with day 16, we're, we're, we're on the back stretch. We're, we're almost done. Uh, just stick with me a little bit longer and, and we'll get through this together. Anyways, um, today's prompt is angular and I want to clarify this in the beginning, just so there's no confusion. I know that there is a difference between the word angular and angler, which is what I'm drawing today. I'm drawing an angler fish, which is not the same word as angular. Uh, I am aware of this, and I knew this going in, but the way I went and approached this pro this uh, prompt is that I decided angular and angler sound very very similar so I decided to just re remake the prompt I decided angular and angular are so similar that uh, that I can draw an angler fish even though the prompt is angular. <laughs> I know that angular refers to angles, sharp corners and stuff like that. So um, yeah, I am aware. I just want to make that clear. <laughs> I don't need to be corrected on that. Uh, anyways, let me go ahead and start sharing some of the fantastic work that you guys shared for yesterday's prompt. Yesterday's prompt was uh, something. What was yesterday's prompt? Oh, week. Yesterday's prompt was week. Um, so you guys came up with some very unique ideas to uh, to display weakness, and it was very cool. Uh, it, it was one of those words that uh, definitely had a lot of potential when it came to interpreting. And today's prompt, uh, I think, angular is also another word that has kind of an ambiguous uh, way of interpreting it and the way that you take today's prompt. So I'm very curious, very curious to see what you guys come up with for today's prompt. I went, I went with like the, a word that is just so sim similar that uh, that's, that's what I did. Uh, when I was, when I was thinking about angular, I could not stop saying angler because it's so similar in sound. Uh, so that's, that's, that's what I went with. Anyways, let me say hello to the family members in the chat. Hello, Joy, Helen, Lily, Karen, Chrissy Sneaks, Who's Art, Lady Marigold, Garbord, uh, and Alex. So glad you guys are able to make it. Um, doing today's live stream a little bit early uh, because, because it's date night. Uh, last week, date night was on Friday. This week, we're going back to Tuesdays. Uh, I'm going to meet my wife in town. I, at, le at least I hope she remembers that I'm meeting her. Anyways, uh, we are going to get some tasty food and watch a movie. For real this time, uh, watching the movies on a Tuesday afternoon is uh, a lot more comfortable than a Friday evening. So that is what we are going to do. And I'm just going to start inking. Uh, I'm, I'm not using the brush. I'm not using the brush today. I'm, I'm just going to be using the pens. I'm going to do this sketch uh, really quickly. I don't know if you guys, how much detail you guys can see here, but I got little Nugget. Uh, I decided to have Nugget riding the anglerfish, uh, and so Nugget is an angler wrangler. <laughs> Uh, I'm yeah, it's dumb, but I thought it was funny, and I wanted to add Nugget to my drawing today, so I went with uh, I went with him riding this very crazy uh, looking anglerfish. I should just call it an angular fish, um, yeah, because of the prompt, even though it's not. I'm actually late to the game. I just finished the day 12 one. Uh, the theme was whale. Now I'm drawing for the day 13. 
uh, guarded. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad you're you're catching up. You'll get you'll get caught up here soon. Oh, hello, Batista. Good to see you again. Missed the last two days. That's all right. You were here in spirit. We all missed you. We're glad you're here now. Oh, well, thank you, Sneaks. I'm glad you like it. And hello, Stacy. Hopefully I didn't miss anybody else in uh, the live chat. I'm just going to do kind of an initial inking and then I'll, I'll make the lines look better after I get rid of the, the graphite after this, uh, this thin inking using a 0.1 millimeter pen to do the initial inking with and then I'll be able to uh, I'll be able to make the lines look a little bit nicer. I'll probably do like a nice bold outline for the entire image to get it to stand off the page a little bit and then go in there and you know do a bit of line finessing to make it look good. I got Nugget up here, sm smiling, grinning like crazy, riding this uh, this in intensely angry anglerfish. Oh, hello, Anna. Good to see you. And Wendy. Always a pleasure to see you. Saying hello to everyone. <laughs> Glad to see ya. I don't really have much else going on today. Um, I had hot chocolate for breakfast. That's that's how I started my day. My upstairs neighbor uh, decided that he was going to start drilling into the walls at about 7.30ish, uh, and it scared me half to death. I was not I was not ready for it. Uh, my wife had just walked out the door essentially to catch the bus to go to work and uh, I was uh, I was just laying in bed and all of a sudden it sounded like the building was coming down on top of me it made me jump like crazy and uh, I you know I hadn't I hadn't heard him drill so early before but he must have he must have heard me talking about him on the live stream and decided to retaliate a little bit because I was, uh, yeah, I was scared half to death when uh, the drilling started. It didn't last for very long. It's like he just wanted to wake me up. Seriously, I, I, I don't even know, I don't even know what, what could have possibly been the reason to, uh, to start drilling so early for such a short amount of time. Maybe, maybe I've been mistaken this entire time, and it's actually just the sound of his alarm clock. And he uh, works nights, so that's why it goes off in the middle of the day. I honestly cannot think of any other reason anybody would have a, a, a logical reason to drill so often. I, I just, it baffles me. I'm so lost with it. I'm so lost with it. It's, it's hilarious. I don't even, 
I can't even be mad about it. I really can't be because it's so confusing. Uh, one of the one of the issues when I first moved in here, one of the problems that I always had was that uh, the other there's a, there's a family of like five or something that lives upstairs, and they have a, a young baby. Well, it's it's a little less young now, but oh my goodness, it was like clockwork. It was it was like clockwork. I, I swear they would they would walk down the stairs. Because the elevator only comes up to my floor, and then everybody that lives on the 11th floor has to actually walk up one set of stairs. Um, but it was like clockwork. It was it was anywhere between noon and one, noon and 13, that I swear they would just walk down the stairs with their crying baby and just like hang out in front of my door. Uh, I mean, I imagine that they were taking the elevator, but still, it was it was just. It was like clockwork, like every day at noon, their baby would just start crying outside my door. Um, it was interesting to say the least. I have loud neighbors. <laughs> loud, interesting neighbors. Except for my next door neighbors, they seem nice. They seem nice and quiet. Yeah, my my neighbor has been rather quiet uh, on the live streams, at least. Yeah, I I don't know what project he is. <laughs> yeah, practicing breaking into safes. That's that's a, a good possibility. Not, not quite sure. Not quite sure. It is, it is a mystery that will forever haunt my existence because I'll never get the answer. I'll never get the answer. I'll end up, I'll end up moving out. I'll end up moving out. Hopefully next year. Oh gosh, I hope next year. I keep trying to get my wife uh, to, to, to look for a house for us to buy. Um, preferably, I'd like to just get land and build our own house, but. Uh, it's not looking very practical financially for us, unfortunately. Um, but maybe if we can find something reasonable, we might be able to. Uh, we might be able to move. I just, I, I want. It's. I'm. I'm getting. I'm getting to the age where it, not owning a house is just unacceptable for me. And if there's, you know, uh, my my wife and I, we don't we don't talk about kids. We don't talk about having kids because neither one of us want to have kids uh, at this current point in our life. Uh, but that is never ever going to change. If I am still renting, I will not ever want to have kids if I am renting. Uh, so the the only possible chance is in the next five years that I own a house. If I do not own a house in the next five years, then I will never have kids in my lifetime. Maybe I could potentially end up adopting, uh, you know, but that would be, that would be the closest uh, and the most likely after that five-year point. Because once I'm 35, no, it's just not happening. Oh, hello, Maria. Uh, I should do a podcast someday. Your voice is meant for that. Uh, well, essentially, I kind of feel like my live streams are just a better version of a podcast. I mean, I talk about super extra random subjects based on whatever you guys are, you know, asking me or discussing in the chat. 
and uh, you know I I do it often enough I do it well Inktober is kind of an exception but I mean once a week podcast but for October it's like a daily podcast it's always like an hour long or sometimes longer oh Cece hello you are going to draw an an angler fish one moment that is my doorbell ringing Sorry, my my wife is uh, she she ordered some stuff and I am expecting it to be delivered and it sounds like they are coming up in the elevator right now to uh, to deliver it. So I'm gonna have to stand up again and go answer the door in just a moment. So bear with me. You can hear the elevator coming right now. They're very quick. Hopefully I don't have to sign anything. I might have to though. Okay, right. they're gonna be ringing in three, two, one. Oh yeah, he was definitely in a hurry. He didn't even leave the elevator. <laughs> he basically threw the box to me from the elevator. Um, I like that, Speedy. Speedy gets it over with. Oh, hello, Jelena. You have uh, your lunch, so you can only stay for a bit. Well, I'm glad you decided to come join us on the live stream, hang out for a little bit. Uh, what do you What are you having for lunch? Anything tasty? Anything vegan? Uh, I think your neighbor's job is putting together IKEA furniture. Well, I've put together quite a bit of IKEA furniture myself. My whole flat is Ikea furniture and I've never had to drill anything so I don't know maybe he's doing it wrong <laughs> got a few air bubbles coming Coming from Nugget. Uh, in this in this scenario, you're probably wondering, uh, can slugs breathe underwater? Uh, Nugget is special, and so yes, Nugget can breathe underwater. He's a superhero, remember? He's got superpowers, one of which is just being adorable. The other, he can breathe underwater when it is creatively necessary, he is capable of breathing underwater. Actually, that's, that's kind of Nugget's uh, superpowers, that when creatively necessary, he is capable of doing anything. So, just, just so you're aware, you can, you can make Nugget essentially into any superhero that you want because like i said his his true superpower is that creatively he can be capable of doing anything so if he needs to breathe underwater you just draw him underwater and he's just going to be just fine that's the way he that's the way he works Uh, we are on the subject of the neighbors again. Yeah, yeah. I think it's time you ask them to be a guest on the next live stream with a full interview on what projects they are doing. Pretty much, yeah, that would be an interesting one, uh, especially since he doesn't speak English and I don't speak Polish. That could be 
uh, a very interesting live stream. I'll have to hire. Uh, I'll have to hire the interpreter that I hired for my wedding. I had to have an interpreter uh, at the wedding. It was not. It was not the most romantic of weddings for that reason, but uh, it didn't need to be romantic. My wife is not the romantic type, fortunately for me. She's, she's super sweet, she's just not romantic. We have more fun just going out to eat than, I don't know, candlelight dinners with stuff. We did have, actually, we did have one, I think our most romantic thing that my wife and I have ever done is when I first visited... Uh, this would have been three years ago. No, that can't be right. Fifth, yeah, it was only three years ago. Three years ago in September. I don't know. I could always go back on my YouTube channel and find out because I recorded, vlogged the uh, first time that we met. But, uh, when, uh, it was, it was the last, it was like the last weekend or the last couple days that I had here. I spent like a whole month here. When I first visited, I stayed for like 24 days or 25 days, so really close to the whole month of September. And uh, we first stayed like the entire first week I was here in Krakow at this rinky-dink little hotel that was uh, pretty far outside of the city, but uh, it was just a short bus ride into town. And uh, we went back to Krakow for the last weekend I was here. And it was kind of a somber event, walking around in the evening, and then we sat down. I actually have pictures of it. Um, sat, we sat down at this little outside restaurant, and they had those uh, those little fire things that are meant to keep you warm in the evenings sitting next to the table so it was it was it was dark it was completely dark out and it was not candlelight but it was it was firelight and we just we just sat there and had a couple glasses of wine together and winded down the the trip a little it was it was nice i, I would say that's probably like the only romantic thing and romantic in the uh, the Hollywood definition of romantic because we all know they make that crap up But it was still it was still very sweet and I, I'll, I'll remember that night forever because it was so, it was such a lovely peaceful time with her We always go back to Krakow because it's it's the city that we it's the city that we like Fell in love in because when I first came to visit for the very first time, we we went straight to Krakow. I I didn't I didn't come to Katowice until uh, after our trip to Krakow. So it was yeah. We always we always go back there with that nostalgia. Uh, that sketch doesn't look very angular to me. Would somebody? Would somebody please uh, explain to Mary? Hello, Eric, uh, Mary. By the way, uh, good morning. Uh, why I am doing what I'm doing? <laughs> I went. I went over it in the beginning. I went over it in the beginning. Uh, basically, it comes down to I know. I I know that Angular is not Angler. <laughs> I know they're different words, but they sound so similar that I just went with this. I thought it'd be fun.
Um, let's see. Oh, you're uh, where are you where are you traveling in to now, Cece? Are you leaving Ohio? I know you were in Kentucky for a while, but uh, yeah, uh, that's fine, Mary. That's fine. No, no need to apologize. <laughs> Um, For the next week and then off to Michigan oh, okay alrighty well have fun in Michigan don't work too hard uh, tell Tom I said hi by the way I haven't I haven't heard from him in a while I look forward to I look forward to seeing you you guys when I when I come visit I'm sure if you're if you're traveling Tom's probably in the car but you're probably listening with headphones. Alrighty then, let's do some teeth here. Let's do some angular teeth. There. Now I'm now I'm following the prompt. I'm making my Angler fish have very angular teeth. Uh, we're so excited booking our snowboard trip. It's going to be a huge family trip. Uh, this is news to me. Uh, where Where's the snowboarding trip going? And when is it? Oh, that's interesting, uh, Maria. I was uh, I was born in Michigan, and then I lived in Washington State for about a decade. Well, yeah, I know that you mentioned snowshoe to me, but that wasn't that wasn't described as a huge family trip. Is this, a, is this a huge family trip that I have to miss out on? I don't really have... Anna and I don't really have anything to, to wear to go snowboarding. And I know that you said that you had some stuff, but I don't think it will be enough for like a multi-day trip.
Uh, yeah, we are definitely brother and sister. <laughs> CC, you can't you you can't call me a turd on live stream. <laughs> oh, I've been I've been to La Push. Um, uh, I I worked I lived in Puget Sound, or I I lived in uh, Bremerton for some time for about a year, uh, and. Mostly I lived in Everett though. I I think uh, I missed I missed the casinos the most. I missed the I missed the big casino uh, up in Arlington, Marysville, uh, the uh, what the heck was that place called? Uh, Tulalip. Yeah, I missed the Tulalip casino. I used to go there all the time. Uh, it was the it was actually it was the Tulalip casino that I learned how or that I practiced counting cards. Um, I don't know how many of you uh, remember those days, but uh, when I first when I first moved to Poland, I wasn't making I wasn't making like any money, maybe like twenty dollars a month uh, from from YouTube. I was not even doing anything with. Uh, with Patreon at the time. I think I had a Patreon set up, but it was more just like, you know, if you like my channel content, then, you know, maybe support me so that I can continue to do it type thing. But it wasn't, it wasn't the, the live tutorial stuff that I do now. And so uh, I wasn't, I wasn't making like any money at all when I first moved to Poland. And, uh, so literally what I would do every day, my wife, well, at the time she was just my girlfriend, but um, what, I, what I did is I would just go to this casino. Uh, it actually closed after I left, but uh, it was open for the time that I was here. Uh, I would just wake up and go to the casino here in uh, Katowice and I would play blackjack uh, and I'd play blackjack anywhere between like I don't know maybe like four and six maybe sometimes even like nine hours uh, straight I would just I would just go there uh, and count cards and make make money that's that's what I did every single day well five days of the week I didn't do it on the weekend um, and, uh, I was here for a little, a little less than three months, a little less than three months. And in those three months, I never paid for anything. I only, I, I only used the winnings from playing blackjack. Uh, they were super lenient. Oh my goodness. The most laid-back casino I had ever played uh, blackjack in, and I got so good at uh, at counting because I just did it constantly. And uh, by the time I had left, uh, I didn't I didn't uh, keep track of of how much I won, but I I did my best to keep track. Uh, but I was spending as much money as I possibly could. We, Anna and I, we went out to eat every single day because I was in town. Um, I was I was in town every day playing blackjack until she would get off work. That was that was kind of my my daily routine. Is I would just play blackjack until she got off work, and uh, I played every day until she would get off work and we would just go out to eat like i said i w i spent as much money as i possibly could while i was here for those for those first three months um and i i could not spend it faster than what i was making it at the casino so i i estimated that i cleared about fifteen thousand. 
uh, within the span of those like two and a half months that I was here. Uh, I can't be super precise about that amount, but um, I never dropped below 5,000 uh, in my bankroll to play. And I would go in there and I'd sit down and I'd, uh, I'd always sit down with like 400 or 500 and then I would usually leave as soon as I hit 2,000. Uh, I mean, some days I would go in there and I'd lose like 4,000, but that was very rare. That actually only happened once, but uh, then most of the days I'd go in there, I'd sit down with, with 400, that was my standard amount that I'd sit down with, and I'd leave with anywhere between 1,500 and, and 4,000. Sometimes I'd have a really good day, but... Uh, yeah, that's, that's what I did when I first got here. All I did was play blackjack. Uh, and the funny thing is, is uh, I left I left Poland for like two months and I came back, obviously. Um, and the casino had shut down. It had went out of business. And I, I don't know if I had anything to do with that. I don't think that I did, but it's kind of cool to think that maybe I did. Because I was... I was still rather beginner-ish at counting cards, and so it was it was pretty obvious that I was counting cards. At least from my perspective, it was very obvious that I was counting. And um, they never did anything. They never did anything. It was they just let me sit there for hours and hours just counting cards. It was amazing. <laughs> Uh, and then when I came back to the United States for a little while, uh, my sister and I, we, uh, we took a little trip to Chicago and I uh, went to a few casinos while she was at work in Chicago during the day. And I went into this one casino, sat down with 200, um, played for maybe, maybe 40 minutes. Uh, I, may, I ended up making like, I don't know, somewhere around $300 that day. Uh, in that first like half hour, 40 minutes or whatever, but they were on me so quick. Oh, they were on, they were on me so quick. Uh, they they ended up kicking me off the table um, after about that that first half hour or 45 minutes or something. It was less than an hour that I was playing there, um, and uh, I was just uh, doing my thing. I was just doing my thing and. Uh, the security came up to me about 40 minutes in and was like, yep, uh, uh, can you can you get off the table? <laughs> and he's pulled me aside. He's like, we don't let we don't let advantage players play here. And uh, I was like, OK, well, um, I made my money, made my money. So I left <laughs> and then I went to another casino and played some poker. Uh, let's see. I was, uh, uh, Everett is awful. Oh, you think so? I, you know, I kind of liked living in Everett. It wasn't, it wasn't too bad for me. Ah, my needed eraser. Oh, gross. Oh, time to buy a new kneaded eraser. I dropped this one on the floor. Oh, that's going to be a pain. In... Yeah, I don't want to touch it. All right, I think I got most of the graphite off. I'm going to grab another pen here. Yeah, this is good. Oh yeah, that that was fun times. That uh, crazy road trip to Chicago and back. That was that was fun for sure. Definitely definitely a memorable road trip. I was so excited that day. Oh gosh, when I got when I got booted out of the 
the, I wasn't kicked out of the casino, but they made sure that I wasn't allowed to ever play blackjack there again. Um, I was so excited. It, it was it was so fun because a common misconception is that uh, counting cards and blackjack is illegal, but it's totally not true. Um, it's there's nothing illegal about using your brain when you're playing a game. Uh, but the casino does have the right to ask you to leave and to not allow you to play. Uh, and if you refuse, then you're breaking the law because that's trespassing. But uh, yeah, when I got when I got booted off the table, I was like, oh my goodness, it's it's official. It's it's real. Like I'm a real blackjack card counter because I did it for years. I mean, I I think I started. I started shortly after I got out of the military, actually, because uh, I was going to school and uh, I was just doing my associate's degree, so my classes were like super easy, and uh, I just I just got into it. I don't even know, I, honestly. Honestly, I think I have to blame YouTube. I think I have to blame YouTube for their weird suggestions. YouTube suggests me all kinds of weird stuff that I don't get, but. Um, I think I think I got some suggestions for uh, blackjack, or maybe it was just like casino bets or something like that. And I don't know how I got caught up in counting cards, but uh, as soon as I did, I was like, "Oh my gosh, this is so fun!" And I would go, uh, I would go to the casino like every single night in, when I lived in Washington, and I just I just count cards for. A few hours or whatever usually usually you need to sit down for like six to ten hours to really make it a super profitable night or whatever and you have to be uh, kind of high stakes but uh, you don't I mean you don't really have to go that route you can just go the more conservative route and make a little bit of money here and there be a grinder And that's what I would do. I just I just go every night. Uh, and the the funny thing is when I first started, when I first started, uh, I didn't actually play. So what I would do is I'd I'd go to the casino and I'd stand there for like five hours, and uh, I just would stand there and count cards. I would never play. I'd just watch people play, and I'd just sit there and count cards. And that's how I practiced. Uh, and then. After about two weeks of that, I sat down for the first time for like um, like ninety dollars, which is not enough for a bankroll. And I just I just sat there and played. I turned that ninety dollars into um, like a hundred and fifty as soon as I got up a little bit, which was you know uh, that's just pure luck in the beginning. If you're gonna start, you have to start with like. A bankroll like 10 times the minimum bet or like 10 times your largest unit of betting which for me was 25 so if the minimum bet is five dollars then I suggest 200 if it's 10 then I suggest 400 Are you guys enjoying my story <laughs> or not? I can change the subject.
Uh, I'm understanding the correlation between your fish um, and angular. Or you're not understanding it. Oh, uh, well, I went over, I went over uh, in the beginning. Uh, so I am aware that the today's prompt, angular, is not the same word as angler fish. Uh, but they sound really similar, which is why I did that. Uh, good morning, Barbara. Uh, I find it fascinating that somebody could do that. I am my admiring your math skills. I uh, love all your stories, especially your rants. <laughs> okay, okay. Cool, cool. Uh, your story of counting cards is a bit like Rain Man. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe not, not that quite similar, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I have a question. I am curious what what you'd like to do while you are back visiting the States, special places to see. Um, uh, your stories are always good. Find my me, enjoy your stories. Oh, okay, okay. Um, okay, so let me let me get back to my my story. I was I was talking about how I started uh, counting cards, uh, just going to the casino and, and practicing a bit. Um, and I started with ninety dollars uh, at Tulalip Casino, and I just. Uh, I, I turned it into like 140, 120 or something along those lines. And that's what I started out as my bankroll. And I never lost it. I just would go back each day, sometimes like after classes or something like that. And I just sit down, do a little bit of card counting, you know, make a, make $100. So before I knew it, the $90 turned into, you know, 250 and then... 500 and then before I knew it I just had I just had a nice thousand dollar bankroll for my my card counting excursions um, and after that uh, after I started to get good and I was comfortable with with playing blackjack you know, I I knew the rules I, I could sit down at any table and just play and not feel like nervous because that is yeah, that's a that's a real thing. Um, when I first, when I very first sat down, handed the dealer my money, and she gave me chips, I was like nervous because I was like, oh my gosh, this is real money. You know, I could I could sit here at this table and lose ninety dollars. I don't, I've I've really never gambled in my life. Um, and any time I went to the casino was to just to go to the comedy show there every Wednesday. But, uh, you know, I, I practiced, I, I, I played blackjack on my iPad, and I uh, just got comfortable being there. And then when I sat down for the first time, I was still like super nervous, my palms were sweaty, all of that. And I won money, and I was like, okay, okay, I'm, I'm getting better at this. And uh, I just go back, and I, I'd win a little bit more money. I, I go back and win a little bit more, and I got more and more comfortable. Once I got comfortable at the at the Tulalip Casino, I decided to to branch off and you know try different casinos. And uh, there's this smaller casino right next to the Tulalip that I went to. I can't remember what it's called, um, but uh, I would go there. It was it was a much smaller casino and. Uh, they had they had better blackjack to be honest with you i liked i liked going there more because sometimes i was just playing at the table with like a, a few people it took me it took me a while to feel comfortable playing blackjack with just me and the dealer uh and that's mostly what i played with played uh while while here in poland was just me and the dealer because i'd go at like 11 in the morning nobody not a soul not a soul was in the casino. It was just me and the dealer, and I would just sit there and uh, and play the, play with the dealer for for hours and hours and hours. Uh, but uh, in the beginning, I wanted a full table. I was like, uh, I want people here. Uh, it goes too fast. It makes me nervous. It's like, do they know that I'm counting? All of that, all of those thoughts. But uh, 
eventually it subsided. Now I could literally go and play blackjack anywhere and just be super comfortable. And you know, I know the rules, I know the etiquette. And once you once you get past that point, you get pretty comfortable with it, and it's it's rather easy. Uh, there was a f there was another casino that I went to. Um, gosh, what was the name of that casino? It was it was a little bit farther up north than Everett and Tulalip and stuff. Uh, and it was like in the middle of the woods. It was like deep in the woods, middle of nowhere. Uh, but it was a really big, super gorgeous casino in the middle of nowhere. And uh, they did not have auto shufflers. They had, um, you, you had to shuffle the six decks by hand, uh, which is super great. It's super excellent. Uh, if you're already dealing with six decks, then, you know, card counting, um, it, it diminishes a little bit. You know, you have like a, a 48 to 52 ratio in, in, in terms of, of odd favoring the casino. But uh, as you go with smaller decks, the odds get inched closer to 50-50, and then card counting lets you uh, capitalize on the on knowing when the odds are in your favor as opposed to the casino's favor, and that's when you bet higher. Um, but when you don't have an auto shuffler, the person is shuffling by hand, gives you a unique uh, advantage by, uh, what is the term called? Uh, deck mapping. So instead of card counting, you almost don't even have to count cards if you can deck map. And deck mapping refers to uh, memorizing where certain patterns of cards have come in and then remembering where they are. And so when you see them dealt, you know which cards are next. And so uh, it's not the easiest thing in the world to do with a six deck shoe, but if you can do it reasonably well, then you can hedge your bets right when you know uh, the blackjacks are coming because, you know, the blackjacks, they don't get shuffled away all that good. So you can kind of keep them, keep tabs on where the aces are. So when you know aces are going to be popping up, uh, because the hand shuffling is not very good. Uh, then that's when you you know double down and increase your bet. I sat down at this table at this random casino in the middle of the woods. Um, I only spent like I, I spent maybe 20 minutes playing because I was like I don't need to make any more any more money. I literally quadrupled my money. I sat down with 200. I left with 600, and it only took like 25 minutes. So it was like super super quick, super easy. Um, and I didn't, I didn't count cards then, I just deck mapped. So I just memorized placement of the aces and then used that information to my advantage, placed my bets accordingly. I miss counting cards, I haven't done it in a long time. I haven't played blackjack in a long time. There, there is a new casino, well it's relatively new, but um, that opened up really close to the same spot that I played before, but I never been in there and um, I don't really have time to count cards. Uh, Anna is, she is super, super uncomfortable with me counting cards. Um, she doesn't want me to like get in trouble with the Polish mafia, Polish uh, casino owners, you know, uh, which I, su I suppose it's maybe under, uh, reasonable, but I don't know. So I, I, I don't do it to make her feel comfortable. And she never liked me walking around outside with like 5,000 swata in my wallet. So it's understandable. Some, some risk involved. If you run into the wrong people, if you walk into the wrong casino and you do that kind of stuff, there's 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 real risks involved because you're costing them money or you're potentially costing them money i never played high stakes though i mean i've i've made my fair share of 500 dollars bets 
$600 bets. Actually, uh, Cece can attest to one. Uh, we went, when I was, when I was visiting, uh, we went to a casino, I think in Pennsylvania together, Cece and I, and uh, I was sitting at the blackjack table for a little bit. Cece was off playing roulette, I think. That's her game. And uh, I was I was just counting, doing my thing, but I was running bad. You know, counting, uh, the, the misconception about counting is that you're always going to win. Um, and there's this thing in statistics called standard deviation, and that, that prevents you from winning every time. And so... Uh, I was sitting there counting. CC was off doing her thing, and I was I was kind of losing my patience a little bit. Uh, and we were getting ready to leave, and I was I think I was down like two hundred dollars. I think I sat down with four hundred. I was around like one eighty or something like that. So I wasn't doing like the best, and I ended up getting back up around like three hundred something, and we were getting ready to leave, and the shoe was ending. The, the shoe is the uh, stack of cards, the deck of cards, uh, and they usually have six decks. Honestly, if you're playing any more than six decks, you should probably find a better casino, better, better table to sit at. The less decks, the more effective counting is. Uh, but uh, uh, the penetration on the shoe was really good, which means that they, they cut the deck with fewer decks on the back. And uh, the count got ridiculously high at the end of the shoe. It was like, I don't know, it was like plus 16 or something like that. And so I was like, there's going to be a blackjack. Like, somebody's getting blackjack. Because um, a high count means that there's more 10 cards, more 10s and aces. <clears throat> so you're more likely to hit a 20 or a blackjack. So I literally just went all in, like three, $400 on a single bet. Um, and then walked out doubling my money because I, I hit a blackjack. Uh, but I knew that the dealer was going to hit a blackjack too. They had an ace, or they had a ten. So I was like, uh, I'll just take even money. I'm not, I'm not that greedy. Most of the time, I won't take even money though if I have a blackjack. But I hit a blackjack with like three or four hundred dollars. Uh, drawing is looking great so far. Uh, thank you very much. Midnight, appreciate that. Um, played bridge for many years. You have to count cards there. Not familiar with, uh, not not familiar with, bridge. Uh, I do I do like to play spades, and uh, what is the what is the name of the game that my wife and I play with my mother in law. Um, Oh gosh darn it, what is I call it Meldunek, but that's not the name of the game. It's uh <laughs> I can't remember for the life of me. Uh, maybe I can find it online. Ah, uh, whatever. I can't find it. It's no big deal. Oh my gosh, I just noticed that Nugget has reins on the fish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nugget's a... Nugget is an angler wrangler. That, that was the idea. I, I don't have anything else to add to this, this drawing here. It's not the most amazing... It's not the most amazing thing in the world, but it's it was fun. I'm getting, I'm getting, uh, I'm getting the jitters a little bit in my hand. My hand is shaky a little bit because I, 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 I only had hot chocolate for breakfast, um, which 
a better way of saying that is I, I didn't have breakfast <laughs> and I'm waiting I'm holding my I'm holding out with my appetite because uh, I'm meeting Anna in the city center to, to get some tasty food and so I didn't want to go into into the city center with a full belly so my my hands my hands are not uh, as as still as they usually are when I'm inking uh, so I don't think I'm gonna do anything else with this uh, angler fish uh, can I post the line art to color this uh, sure I can do that I mean it's if you want to color it, I don't feel like it's worth coloring, but uh, I'll, I'll post it. Okay, Robin, you take care. Thanks for thanks for coming by. Yeah, I got a little nugget up here. Little nugget. But anyway, that that's uh, gonna be it. Short and sweet for today. Uh, that was probably the shortest stream of uh, Inktober already. I don't want to do anything too complex today because uh, I want to get ready and head into town. I got I got some magic cards I need to buy. Yeah, there's a PPTQ. Uh, this this weekend that I want to win and I need the rest of the cards for my deck uh, so that I can go and uh, annoy people have I have a really annoying deck <laughs> um, anyways uh, yeah that's that's gonna be it thank you guys so much for coming by and hanging out I hope that you hope you enjoyed my uh, card counting story uh, it's been a while since I told that story couple years at least I think I, I think I talked about it a little bit uh, on one of my first few streams uh, and uh, just so you know card counting is 100% legit uh, unless you are uncertain it is totally legit and getting good at it can be a lot of fun it can be a lot of fun it's it's really just adding one and two and, and subtracting one and two so it's super easy um, Anyways, thanks again, and I will see you for tomorrow's Inktober prompt, which is swollen. That's a goofy one. Anyways, uh, you guys have the, uh, a lovely rest of your Tuesday, and I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Peace.